What up, everybody? We're trying something new. We're tying one fly in two different countries and combining it into one video. I'm Sven Diesel. Sean Challey here from Fly Culture, and today we're going to tie a simple CDC uh, deer hair caddis with a straggle string body. In the vise, I'm using a D14 by Stealth, uh, one of their dry fly hooks, and in the bobbin, I have a 12 aught white nano silk. And we'll start by adding a thread base. And we're going to be working our way back towards the uh, bend of the hook. And we're not too concerned about touching wraps, but it helps with the underbody and it's good practice. But work your way back to the bend using your tag end to help secure those with good wraps. And as you get to the bend, probably about even with the barb, uh, go ahead and cut out your tag end. And let's get ready to tie on our first material, straggle string. For the straggle string, I am using a green olive. Uh, it's their original straggle string. They do have different variations out there, but this works great for the caddis. We're going to tie it in by the end there with a few secure wraps. And you don't really want to exceed the halfway point on the shank. It doesn't matter if you go a little bit past it. And we're going to bring it back to that barb and get our thread out of the way. And we're going to wrap this uh, and palmer it back, palmer those fibers back as you go. This is going to add a bunch of bugginess to the pattern. Yeah, the more material you lay down and preen back, the buggier it's going to look. And if you've got a rotary vise, you can go ahead and trap your thread with your pinky. And start to spin that around with touching wraps, working your way up the shank. The more dense you get this material, the more buggy it is. It's an uh, ultra durable material and you want to secure it with a wrap behind and a few wraps in front. We can go ahead and snip out that uh, remaining uh, tag end. And at this point, we're going to prep to get our uh, underwing and overwing. So you want to preen all these loose fibers back, uh, trying to clean that up as best as possible. You know, this stuff just looks buggy. It's uh, really durable. It takes way more hits than hackle. And I, you know, just love it. So pull those fibers back if you can, lock them down. And uh, we're going to get ready to add some CDC feather. I'm using a olive CDC feather and uh, I've captured half of a feather into a Stonfo clip and we are going to split some thread, get that spun up. Grab your bodkin and this can be a bit tedious. Um, once you get the hang of it, I find that this nano silk splits really, really well. Their waxed version splits even better. Uh, but once we get a split in there, you want to kind of put your finger inside, keep it open, create a bit of a dubbing loop inside of that thread. And we'll load it with the clip. Try to get it near the top as possible. And kind of push those fibers up, pack them a little tighter. Try not to lose too many. And let's spin that up, lock it all in. I prefer doing it this way versus tying in the feather. Um, I mean, both are very good ways, but I find that doing it this way takes out the weight of the stem of the feather. And, uh, and it tends to throw a few of the fibers underneath the fly, which gives that added bugginess in that profile. Pull the fibers back. If you have a few excess fibers you don't like, pinch them and tear them. Don't cut them. This will give the ends that you do tear more of a natural look. Or I guess the lazy man's way is just take two of these uh, feathers, line them up so they're curving the same way, kind of give it a little preen so you got uh, an, an easy point to tie in, do two wraps over the top, pull them to length and just let them sit on the top of the shank. And you know, you want it to extend just a little bit past the bend and then we'll secure that down and go ahead and trim out these stems. Now we're going to tie in our deer hair. I'm using uh, just a natural deer hair. You can use an olive if you'd like. For this pattern, I'm just going to stick with the natural. And I'm going to be using an elk hair. I've uh, fished this pattern on my local waters with dyed and non-dyed natural and bleached uh, uh, elk hair. You know, it, I don't seem to think the fish have a preference as to color, but the silhouette is more what we're going for. You want to make sure to brush out that under fur. Um, you can see all that that came out. Just get yourself a good comb. And then I like to pinch the tips very firm and just kind of pull out any shorter um, uh, hairs at this point. And we are ready to uh, get this into our uh, hair stacker. 
and you want those tips to be nice and aligned and if uh, you, what you want to do is just slide them into the uh, top with the tips down and then give it a few taps and then when you pull it out just be super careful and not to mess up the tips if you do just slide it in again but sometimes you'll have a little bit of fluff just get rid of that again be sure to keep those tips aligned and not to mess them up and once you got it to where you think you want it we're gonna put the colored butts there's butt ends that are kind of a lot thinner we're gonna line up the colored portion of the hair with the, the bend of the hook and we're gonna lock it in a couple of secure wraps and what I like to do is I like to start it and then go backwards a little bit and then pull it tight just to really lock in what's 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 in your hand don't worry so much about the butts now at this point we're uh, getting ready to the next step to tie in our hackle but uh, sometimes I found it helpful to just uh, pull up these uh, butt sections here and just give a couple wraps underneath it just kind of helps hold them in place and kind of just sets the tone for finishing up the fly at this point you can cut the butts off uh, and form your head I like to leave that on um, I'll show you why in a little bit here once we get to the hackle I, I did cut it off a little bit there just to make sure that uh, you know it's manageable so once we got a nice base we're gonna throw some hackle down what I like to do first is is color this because I use white for everything I like to color my thread as I go I'm just using a brown sharpie here and I'm using an orange sharpie um, to match the uh, straggle string sometimes I'll do green as well but uh, you just want to give a good uh, thread base here as you uh, tie in your hackle so that as you wrap your hackle uh, so saying you don't get touching wraps you when you wrap and it's colored underneath you're not going to see that white so in this time you're going to see orange or olive or brown so now we're going to tie in our hackle feather. I'm using a ginger hackle feather that I've stripped one half of the fibers off. And at this point you can start wrapping again because I have that darker color underneath. It's okay if it's not perfectly spaced. We're going to bring it forward. Four or five wraps are good. And I'm using a brown hackle that I didn't strip the other side of the feathers. And you can tell the difference in how dense the feathers are by not doing so. Stripping it makes it look a little bit more leg-like. But the density of these fibers help it ride a little bit better in the water and float longer. So we'll go ahead and secure that hackle off with a wrap behind and in front. Trying not to capture a lot of those hackle that we just tied in. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get ready to uh, finish off this fly. But before we do that, we need to... So now what we'll do is we'll pull back these fibers and we'll build up another bit of a head in there. You can add some wraps in between the fibers as you go. Um, I find once you glue it, it does lock it in nicely, so that's okay. And, uh, and now we'll whip finish. This part uh, can be a bit cumbersome, as you can see. That's okay if a few fibers do get trapped in there and you want to get three or four good wraps to secure that or seven, whatever your lucky number is, and cut off the excess. It does also help to not drink a ton of coffee as you can see. Uh, I've been drinking coffee all day and this is what happens. So now that we've got that thread cut off, we can trim up any of the fibers that got caught in there. And now what I like to do, depending on the size of the hackle feather, I like the head to be about 50% of the length of the hackle. And that's why I keep the butts on. And we are there. So at this point, you just want to make sure you trim out any hackle fibers that may be uh, you know, covering up your eye or that could get in the way when you're trying to tie that on or that just seem to annoy you. You could also trim off the uh, bottom here um, underneath the shank but I'm going to leave them because I like the bugginess and the appearance of legs. Now you could use head cement uh, for this on some of your wraps or whip finish. I like to just put a drop of thin resin uh, right between the hackle and the uh, elk hair or deer hair and a little bit on the side just to hold that thread, hold that hackle in place and make it a little bit more durable. You know, the fish aren't going to notice it on top and it doesn't add too much weight but just a little trick to help make this fly just a little bit more durable so it can fish longer and uh, make it more enjoyable, uh, longer lasting fly. And there we have it. That's a simple CDC caddis uh, with a deer hair wing and a straggle string body. Deadly fly to use in the summer months. 
and I uh, hope you found this video useful. If you did, please subscribe. Thank you. And thanks for taking the time to watch this. Uh, as you know, most of these straggle string and elk hair and hackles available in affinity colors. So tie them up to match your local waters and have fun. Tie them up and go fish them. Thanks for watching.